Hello everyone and welcome back to XYZ Maker, this is Ali. I know this review might sound crazy, but as you know, sometimes developers can be inspired by crazy ideas and make a success out of failure. And I know this will not have much attention because it was not made by one of the most well-known YouTubers, but anyway, stay tuned. We all know how frustrating shifting is, and the most frustrating part is that shifting overhangs do not need any support to be performed, and to be honest, I mean sometimes they come out pretty neat. Meanwhile, model overhangs cannot be performed well without supports, and sometimes even with supports. So I started my journey by searching this unreasonable and illogical question of how to make a layer shifting effect intentionally, and I mean at some point of the model, to support the overhangs above, and eliminate the need for normal supports which consume lots of materials. But found nothing helpful as expected, so that was an epic fail, then an idea came across my mind, a sacrificial slab. A sacrificial slab is a partially separated floating object that can be used to support the overhangs above and then removed as a sacrifice from the model itself. In simple words, it's a part of the model that can be sacrificed in order to print the overhangs with the least consumed time and materials. So I designed a simple model with a 90 degrees overhang to test this new method of floating supports. I imported this model into Process Slicer and disabled supports, sliced it and then printed it. This step was only to measure how much distortion in millimeters does it need to support one square inch of the overhang and in my case it turned to be around 3.5 millimeters of spaghetti that happens before supporting the layers above successfully. Then in the second attempt I added a box of 25 by 25 millimeters, only the thickness is 3.5 millimeters, but then double the thickness just in case for safety, because this sacrificial slab also needs another sacrificial slab. So in simple math, each one square inch of the overhangs needs at least around 7 millimeter thick sacrificial slab to be printed successfully. The next step was to move and locate that slab exactly below the overhang and add tolerances between the slab and the model of 0.32 mm on the Z direction and 0.15 mm on the XY direction. And by the way, you can use your own favorite modeling software to model this slab. But I made all of this in a simple way, which is only by eye because not all of the users have modeling skills. Then I changed the settings of this slab independently. 0 parameters, 3 bottom layers, 3 top layers, and 10% of infill, then sliced the model and printed it. And here is the final results and as you can see it's pretty neat and efficient. Now let's discuss the advantages and the limitations of this method and let's start with the advantages. This method takes less printing time. And it consumes less materials. And it occupies less build plate area compared to other types like tree supports. It should take less efforts while removing supports due to less materials. And of course less vertical failure rate because as you know there are several types of supports and all of them start from the bottom all the way up to the overhang and sometimes they get broken in the middle of the print and that causes printing failure most of the time. And now the limitations. It cannot be printed as a floating island, it has to be at least in contact with one side of the model. Failure rate should be proportional to the length of the cantilever, but I was really amazed by these impressive results, it worked even with 3 inch long overhang, so I thought of decreasing consumption of time and materials by making a triangular floating support instead of the rectangular one. And it needs a little bit more time in preparation because there is no quick tool in the slicers for making these slabs, that's why I have made this review to urge developers to create one. And by the way, all the results and the numbers mentioned in this review are just in my case, it will certainly vary from one user or one machine to another, so they are variable according to many parameters, but anyway you can start from these values as a reference. And that's all for today, I hope you liked the video and I really hope that developers can take this useful method into consideration by making a quick tool to add these sacrificial slabs with the desired tolerances into the well-known slicing softwares. And please don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video and see you next time.